Hello and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so glad you've joined me today. For this video, I'm sharing the process of how I made 17 cards using Kendra's card challenge number eight. Now I shared these finished cards in my video introducing my quarterly challenge back on October 1st. I will link this introduction video above and in the description box below so you can see how I cut each of the papers and it also explains the challenge in a little more detail and how to enter the contest to have a chance to win over $400 worth of prizes. For these cards, I used the Pumpkin Season Paper Pad by Pink and Main, and I selected six sheets of pattern paper and cut them according to the cutting guides in the free printable that's available for download on my website. I placed all of the pieces in numbered cellophane bags by sketch number. Now the gray, black, and white areas on the card sketches in the printable are where you will use solid colored cardstock and the colored areas on the sketches correspond to the color-coded papers on the PDF. I went ahead and matched all the pieces with colored cardstock and I prepared my card bases and I cut my layers off camera. Now just for information, I have sped this video up eight times and I will put the card sketch in the top right hand corner so you can see the card sketch from the PDF. I'll list any products that I use to make these cards up on the screen the first time I use them. And I will also link them in the description box below as well. Now, some of these are affiliate links, which means if you make a purchase, I get a small percentage of the sale without any extra cost to you. This helps me keep my channel going and also helps to keep the challenges free for everyone to download each quarter. For this first card with the wood grain pattern paper, I wanted to add some texture. So I ran the paper through an embossing folder, which is by Sizzix. It's their 3D wood grain. And then for the circle part, I'm using the Fall Circles Stamp and Die Set by Pretty Pink Posh. Several of the card sketches have circles on them. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp a bunch of these images using my Misty Stamping platform. And since I'll be coloring these with Copic markers, there's two different inks that are good to use. Memento Tuxedo Black or Gina K Designs Amalgam Ink. They're both Copic marker friendly and Ranger archival ink stays wet a little longer and can be embossed with clear embossing powder. So sometimes I'll use this and give my images a little extra shine. But for today, I went with the Memento ink and I stamped it several times just to make sure that my images were nice and black. And now I'm taking some Copic markers that match the colors in the pattern paper and I'm coloring the images that I want to use for this first card. And I'm going to go ahead and color the other ones that I plan to use for a few of the other cards here in a bit. Now while I do this, I'll share some personal things with you to let you know what's been going on. If you're a member of the Kendra's Card Challenges Facebook group, you may have seen pictures of my daughter's wedding that I just posted. She was married on October 15th and it was a beautiful wedding. The weather was perfect and everything turned out better than we could have imagined. But it was a lot of work. Part of my craft room has looked like a florist shop since June. But I was really happy with the way the flowers turned out, even though I had never done anything like that before. I haven't really had much time to work on other videos aside from getting the quarterly challenge ready for October 1st. Now, I am a teacher in the school year. I'm teaching a college class plus two other classes that have certification exams. So I have had a lot more work to do at home than I've had in the past, which basically means less time in my craft room. But hopefully, now that the wedding is behind me, I should be able to create more and share more videos. Now, um, to finish up this card, I'm just basically going to glue this little circle on here. And I'm adding a sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp. I will be using some sentiment strips on a lot of these cards today. I really like using sentiment strips because you can easily grab whatever sentiment you need when you need a quick card. So I keep my little Ziploc bag full of just about any sentiment or occasion you can think of. But since I wanted the sentiment to be to the right of the circle, I scooted it over and then I cut off the end and I'm placing that plain white piece that was cut off over on the left hand side so that when I glue the circle piece down, it will look like it's a continuous white strip, but the sentiment is scooted over just a little bit. You saw where I added a Love From Lizzie peel-off sticker in brown to the top of the pattern paper. These are great for adding some extra embellishments, especially when you look at a card and think, 
this needs something else but I don't know what <laughs> but I like to use them to separate pattern papers too so you'll see me using these for a lot of my other cards and then to finish off the card I'm using the Midnight Dahlia confetti mix from this cause for confetti and I just placed a few of the different sized flat sequins in different colors to the right of that circle and then I glued those down on that plain white part I added some clear wink of Stella to the pumpkins to make them a little bit shiny and then I colored in the bottom part to kind of make a table that the pumpkins could sit on and this finishes up card number one now for card number two I felt like this needed more color rather than just using the two strips that are colored on the card sketch so I used another one of the pattern papers and the paper pad and I cut a layer that measures four by five and a quarter inches and I basically I'm gluing that directly on the card base so that I could tie the two colors together and I used the sentiment strip again for this card and to add to it I decided to use the pumpkin season stamp and die set that came in the crafty courtyard kit and while I had this out I went ahead and stamped a few extra images that I'll use for some other cards later on and I cut them out first and then I stamped them off camera and I'm using a Copic marker to add some shadows now for these images I used Catherine Pooler orange twist and eucalyptus inks and Simon Says Stamp ocean ink and I'll use this mug here for another card but I went ahead and added some light gray to the edges of the white part now for most of my cards I'm not adding a lot of dimension since I mail the majority of my cards adding foam tape or foam squares can cause the envelopes to be too thick where they won't be able to go through the machines at the post office so that'll end up costing more to mail and I'm normally all about adding dimension because I just think it looks better but I've just had to resist the urge to pop things up like I've done before and so after gluing everything down I'm basically gonna finish off this card by using a glitter enamel dot from pink and main and I'm just gonna add that to the right hand side of that sentiment strip there and this is card number two for card number three instead of using an oval like the sketch shows I'm using the fall circles die set from pretty pink posh and I cut this ornate rectangle out of teal blue um, specialty card stock that goes behind pattern paper C and since it's specialty paper it's got like raised dots on it I wanted to make the most use of it so I'm also using another sentiment strip for this card and I use the die again to cut off the edges to match the ornate piece so that I can place it below that um, scarecrow there and I cut another white piece of that ornate rectangle to place in the center just to keep everything level and I thought the scarecrow needed some color behind it to make it pop so I used the circle punch to make a slightly larger layer and this is card number three for card number four the back layer is one of the pattern papers and it has the colored banner across the top and you can put any shape embellishment that you'd like there where the star is I cut out the word thanks from glitter paper using a pink and main word die and for the truck I'm using one of the dies from the special delivery kit by Queen and Company I cut the truck out of that same teal specialty paper that I used on the last card and I added some ink to the edges of the truck with a sponge dauber to give it a little bit more interest now this kit is made for making these trucks into shaker cards but as I mentioned before I mail most of my cards so I just opted not to make it into a shaker card but I did end up adding the sunflower as my embellishment on that banner piece to match the sketch so of course that made it thick but I thought it was super cute I just love that sunflower I may swap that out for a flat embellishment later if I do end up mailing this but to make the window of the truck look more real I colored that white in with a light gray Copic marker and then I filled that in with some Nuvo crystal drops and morning dew and that dries clear so it'll make it shiny like a window and then to attach the sunflower I used some glue dots
and this is card number four. For card number five, I have the two strips of pumpkin pattern paper and then the tan piece in the middle. So to tie these colors together, I used a diagonal striped pattern paper from that same paper pad for the horizontal strip that goes across the front. I just didn't want it to be plain. And for the sentiment, I used the Many Many Thanks stamp from the Spotlight Saying stamp set by Pink and Main. And to make that horizontal strip level, I added some scrap pieces to the ends. But after gluing that strip down, I remembered that I was going to add some Love from Lizzie peel off stickers between each of the strips of pattern paper there um, on that middle panel. So luckily I was able to pull it off before the glue dried, but I went with shiny brown stickers to bring out that color in the pumpkin paper. And to make sure it's all level, I added some white scrap paper to the back of that square piece. And then to finish off the card, I added three glitter enamel dots to the left of that horizontal strip. Now these enamel dots were part of the pumpkin season crafty courtyard kit, but I believe you can purchase them separately. And you'll see me use them quite a bit to embellish a lot of these cards. And this is card number five. Now for card number six, I'm using the Gather Here Stamp and Die Set by Colorado Craft Company for the embellishment that goes in the top right hand corner of the sketch. Now I stamped this with that same orange twist ink from Catherine Pooler. And then of course I cut it out using the matching die. But before I did that, I colored in the stem and the leaves with some Copic markers. This one was really quick and easy to make because the stamp was solid and I really like stamps that I don't have to do a whole lot of coloring. But anyway, I glued all the pieces down and then to finish off this card, I added some gold stickles glitter glue to the vine. And this is card number six. For card number seven, there are two pieces that were cut for that little strip at the bottom. On the cutting guide, it shows one as optional, so you can decide which one works best. So I decided to use the wood grain pattern. And then for the sentiment, I used a stamp from Prickly Pear Stamps that says, Thankful for You. And I stamped that on a banner from the same yellow textured paper that I used for the layer on top of the card base. And then I had this cute little pumpkin. It's a clay pumpkin in my stash. And I used that to embellish the card. And I uh, adhered that down with those glue dots. And this is card number seven. Now for card number eight, this one has six triangles that should be placed on a layer that measures three and a quarter inches by four inches. And so since I picked all of the different colors of those polka dot patterns for my triangles, I thought that this card needed an extra colorful layer. So instead of using solid colored cardstock like the sketch calls for, I used another piece of pattern paper for the four by five and a half inch, or I'm sorry, five and a quarter inch layer. And I glued the triangles onto a white layer to match the card base. Now for the circle element, I used the fox from the Pretty Pink Posh Fall Circle stamp set that I stamped and colored earlier. And I opted not to put a sentiment on the outside of this card. I'll just stamp it on the inside later. But this is card number eight. Now for card nine, which is one of two split front cards, I purposely cut my paper to plan to use the blue side with the dots. 
and I'm flipping the sketch over so that the ray is coming from the bottom. I plan to use the Flutter Bee Sky Stamp from Sweet November Stamps in the bottom left corner, and I'll be stamping the butterflies on the white part of the card base between the two sets of paper. Now I want these pieces to be raised up, so I'm cutting some fun foam to be slightly smaller than the pattern paper pieces. So I first cut a four by five and a quarter inch rectangle piece. And then I was going to use my T ruler, but then I decided it was just easier to use the already cut pieces and just mark it with a marker to know where to cut with my guillotine trimmer. But to make sure that I stamped the butterflies in the right spot, I traced the lines of where the pieces will be glued down directly on the card base. And then I placed it in my Misty. And then I aligned the butterflies between those two pencil lines. And then I stamped these using some Memento ink. And then next I'll be coloring in the butterflies and that fl Flutter Bee Sky image with Copic markers. Now coloring is definitely not one of my strong suits. I've watched videos on how to do it, but I just haven't had much time to practice. But I do really enjoy it. You'll have to let me know if you like coloring down in the comments below. I'm curious. I think sometimes when I need a quick card, ephemera is a lot easier, but if I'm sitting down to make a special card for someone, I don't mind the coloring, but I'm very critical of myself. I think a lot of times when I watch other YouTubers color, I'm like, man, why can't I be that good at coloring? But it's like with most things, the more you practice, the better you get at it. So I'm looking forward to when I will have more time to practice. Now that might might not be until after I retire, but that is one of my crafty goals is to get better at coloring. But I really think this Flutter Bee Sky image is just adorable. Um, I, I think the hair is probably my um, most intimidating part. The skin, I don't really know how to do shadows very well. Um, so I'm still working at that, but I, I've gotten better with hair, I must say. <laughs> While I finish the coloring, I want to mention about my Facebook group that's called Kendra's Card Challenges. This is where you'll upload a photo of all 17 cards to officially enter the challenge. Now, if you're not on Facebook, that's okay. You can upload a photo using the form on my website. But if you are on Facebook and you're not already a member of my group, I hope you'll join us. I'll have this link below in the description box. But there's lots of card making inspiration and it's really cool to see how different everyone's cards turn out using the same sketches. Plus you'll get reminders about the monthly contests. For each card sketch I pick a winner and you'll see these photo albums under the albums section of the Facebook group. But this is where you can upload individual photos of your cards so that we can see them better. It's kind of hard to see all the details of a card when it's grouped with 16 other cards. So that's why I like having these separate photo albums too. I also post links to the winner's videos in the Facebook group. So you don't want to miss out on claiming a prize, that's for sure. So next, I fussy cut her out using my Fiskars Spring Assist Scissors. And I erased the pencil marks using my sand eraser and I glued everything down. And then once I had these pieces glued down, down, I was just basically trying to figure out the placement before, you know, making it permanent. But I did end up adding some iridescent Love from Lizzie peel-off stickers to the edges of those raised pattern paper pieces. And then I decided to add the sentiment strip that says time to celebrate. I kind of, I thought that that went well with this, with the theme of this card. And then to finish this off, I added some Stickles glitter glue in the crystal color. It's kind of an iridescent color too. I added that to the butterflies. And then I, um, of course, I trimmed off the pieces that were hanging over the edge of the card. But I ended up adding some Nuvo crystal drops in Morning Dew to her eyes. Remember that dries clear, but it just makes it glossy. And this is card number nine. So for card 10, this is the second split front card, but on this one, the pattern piece is in the middle. So I cut a four by five and a quarter inch panel of white heavyweight cardstock, and I embossed that off camera using the floral field embossing folder by Simon Says Stamp. And I also flipped this sketch upside down like I did with card number nine so that the ray kind of goes up to the 
top right hand corner and for the sentiment I used the Hello Friend stamp from the Gina K Designs Easter Blessings stamp set and I stamped that with some seafoam ink from Simon Says Stamp and I cut it out with a small stitched rectangle die from Pink and Main. But back to the embossed panel, rather than just placing the pattern paper on top, I wanted it all to be flush on the card base. So I took my T ruler and I measured the embossed panel to cut it the same way that I did the pattern paper. I marked it with a pencil and then I cut it with my trimmer. But I opted not to raise any of the pieces up with fun, fun foam this time like I did before. And I also added some silver Love from Lizzie Peel Off stickers along the edges of the white embossed piece. And then for the embellishment in the corner, I punched out some daisy flowers from some textured yellow paper. And then also some leaves from some lime green paper. And then to curl the petals on my flower, I used my paper piercer. And this is card number 10. For card 11, the sketch calls for two pattern paper strips. And since my patterns were the solid colors with the polka dots, I decided to pull in another sheet of pattern paper to tie these two colors together. This panel with the mugs was cut to four by five and a quarter inches. And I used dark brown card stock for my card base. And earlier I colored the mugs, so that's what I'm gonna use on the circle element. I also cut out a circle out of that textured teal paper and then a small heart for the really small embellishment out of that textured yellow paper. And then I added a sentiment strip that says a handmade hug. And this is card number 11. For card 12, I used the Hello Word and Shadow die from Trinity Stamps. Now this came in their slimline envelope die set and I cut the word from glitter cardstock and I put it on the shadow that was cut from brown cardstock and again to try to use up the rest of the pattern papers in my paper pad I added the background panel of the large dots I added up that pattern paper piece to tie all of these colors together now this card is pretty simple I just finished it off with matching colored glitter enamel dots in each of the colors on the strips. And this is card number 12. Now for card 13, this is the first of two sunburst cards. You have to really think about how you want these cards to look before you start cutting the papers. And I opted to pair this floral pattern with the tan polka dot pattern but because I didn't think about it until after I cut my papers I'm having to flip the sketch in a different direction than what's shown on the printable. So to decorate this card I'm using several different die sets from TLC Designs. I flipped the sketch so that the dragonfly would be in the sky in the top left corner um, but I glued the circle down and then realized that I forgot to stamp the sentiment on top of that circle. <laughs> so I ended up having to place the whole card inside of the Misty and I had to place it upside down in order to stamp it. But I'm using the congrats stamp from the TLC Design Celebrate stamp set. And then after I stamped this using that teal or ocean ink from Simon Says Stamp, I trimmed off the edges of the circle and then I glued down all of the elements. Now I put a cluster of flowers to the left of the dragonfly and I added some googly eyes to the face of the dragonfly and then some enamel dots to the centers of the flowers to finish off the card. For card 14, it's the other Starburst card, and for this one, it's basically the same thing, except the rays are coming from the bottom right corner. 
For the sentiment, I'm using the congratulations stamp from the Everyday Mini Sentiment Stamp Set by Whimsy Stamps, and I punched it out with a banner punch. I already glued down the pieces, and here I'm just adding some white peel-off stickers between the patterns. Now, I used the Daisy Punch again, but this time with the Teal Specialty cardstock, and then I also used some lime green leaves that will be on my smaller circle element in the corner. And this is card number 14. Now for card 15, this sketch has a solid panel with three strips of pattern paper that are separated out with the largest piece across the top. And for the large shape in the middle, instead of a circle, I decided to use the wavy rectangle dies from Whimsy Stamps. I cut the biggest layer from the teal specialty card stock. And on the smaller white piece, I stamped Happy Crafting from the Happy Day stamp set by Cat Scrappiness. And to finish off the card, I added a flower in the lower right hand corner and I placed a teal enamel dot in the center. And this is card number 15. Now for card 16, it has two rectangles from pattern paper and one rectangle from matching colored cardstock. And again, I used that same teal specialty paper that has the raised dots on it. And I glued these pieces side by side. And instead of using a circle, I used the Proud of You Word and Shadow Die by Cat Scrappiness. I cut that from some glitter cardstock and added some enamel dots in the top left corner. And now we're on to card number 17. This sketch calls for the pattern paper strip across the center, plus the little banners on the top of the square piece. Again, I wanted to use up more of the pattern paper in my paper pad. So instead of it being a plain white background with the green strip across the middle, I added the floral pattern paper as the layer on top of the card base. It wasn't quite wide enough to fit the entire front of the card, so I added two one quarter inch strips um, to the ends. And then for the scallop square piece in the middle, I used the scallop square dies from Pretty Pink Posh to cut out the brown and white layers. And then I cut the top layer out of some glitter paper using the Hello Shaker die from Pretty Pink Posh. And then I had to trim those banner pieces to be a little bit shorter than what the sketch calls for so that they wouldn't cover up part of the word. And since this is the last card, I want to invite you to participate in this quarter's challenge by downloading the free printable. Remember the link to the video explaining how the challenge works and how to cut the papers and how to enter and everything like that. That link is down in the description box. And you'll also want to check out the KCC8 giveaway hop videos where 15 of my crafty friends share their take on the sketches. I'll link this below also. Again, here are all 17 of the cards. You'll have to let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. I want to thank the prize sponsors for Kendra's card challenge number eight. And I'd also like to thank my channel patrons. This is a membership program where patrons receive a handmade card from me each month, plus additional membership perks like early access to quarterly card challenges, access to archive challenges, and additional monthly printables like One Sheet Wonders, digital stamps, and more. So for more information, please visit the Patreon link that's in the description box. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you'd give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Also, follow me on other social media platforms for more card making inspiration. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Have a wonderful day. Mm -hmm.